Hey there, welcome to Unwomanly, the podcast where taboo topics are never off the table and discussions with an open mind and dirty mouth are always encouraged. My name is Jen Danzak and I'm recording in my apartment in West Hollywood, California with a very special guest. (laughs) She rocks a red lip better than anyone I know, straight from New Jersey and living that bi-coastal life. She's the boss business bitch we all can learn from. Welcome to Unwomanly King Chris. Mm. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so glad you're here, girl. Thank you. Thank you. I'm oh, excited yeah. to be here. Oh, good. Yeah, I just think girl. it's I think it's insane how we met because I was a server and you were a guest at the restaurant. Yeah, yep. And I literally was like immediately drawn to your energy. Like, yeah. You're so yeah. nice. <laughs> Loved your accent. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, you have so many titles, girl, like entrepreneur, creator, founder, owner, and even senior clinical scientist, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that entail? Like you take part in cancer research, right? Yeah. So I primarily um, oversee drug development for cancer research. So um, it's essentially monitoring uh, clinical trials before the FDA approves a drug. Um, wow. a new drug or therapy for uh, cancer. And so I have a scientific oversight of the research sites that's actually produ- um, producing experiments. So it's an interesting career. Yeah. Um, very, very dynamic, but... Um, <laughs> Oh, my God. Sometimes I think I'm, like, a lot more humble in that role than people. Because some people are like, wow. And I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. It's, like, super administrative. I'm, like, rolling my eyes in the back of my head. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been in life science for uh, 13 years and been in cancer research for about five. So I see firsthand how um, drugs are made, how drugs are developed, like, that entire process and what it takes to bring a drug to the market for people. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, like, you, I'm assuming you got your bachelor's and your master's. Right. So I have an associate's in uh, business administration marketing. I have a BA in sociology and an MBA in uh, business administration. And I um, got an online um, certificate from Harvard for improving global health. Wow, yeah. that is in, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Not many people can say they have a certificate from Harvard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, certified and improving global health from them. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think that those degrees really helped you succeed in even becoming an entrepreneur as well? Girl, listen, <laughs> let me tell you something. I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I just know I wanted to be very successful and have like a, a liberated and abundant life. Yeah. And I just was like going to school, trying to figure shit out. I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to be a lawyer I wanted to be all this shit because yes. there was no guidance really um on what you should do it's always the status quo go to school get a job you know mm-hmm. and um I was like oh I just want to run shit I just want to you know yes. I know that for a very long a very young age I've even wrote in my high school yearbook like I I see myself being wealthy and owning a lot of businesses but never quite knew what that entailed yeah. um so I kind of stumbled on cancer research I didn't even wow. like I was actually losing my job and I was just like I have to do something Get and uh, yeah and that's when um I was interviewing unemployment was running out and I I was like, fuck, if yeah. I don't get an answer to this question, like somebody tells me yes. Um, and uh, that's when I got the, the job. And I was like, oh, this is dope. Like, I really like enjoy it. But, um, you know, I need to do something that solves a bigger problem that I've been seeing in my industry. So that's how I started um, Wow, my first business. Yeah, because yes. <laughs> I know you did an investment company, right? And you still have yeah. that. Yeah. So Ooh. I'm the owner of Moneystone Investments, which um, I'm a professional equity investor. So mm, that's bitch. just building like bitch. you know <laughs> <laughs> portfolio. I'm super big on um, financial literacy. Yes. Um, so it's it's a big thing. Le- learning how money works first, and then you can develop wealth building. And so if I plan on being wealthy, I need to develop that mindset. So I'm big on that and it really changed my life because um I used to be around these women at work and they would just always talk about money and I'm like shit I feel broke and Mm -hmm. I know you know I know we make like the same amount but you bitches are talking about like you know and I was like well what the hell am I doing wrong and so um 
this guy I was dating at the time, he was like a financial manager and he introduced mm-hmm. me to this lady that worked at JP Morgan and she was just like, listen, you need to start to think about money differently and it was game on ever since. So now, you know, I've put myself through trade school. I study the wealthy, the elites, and I professionally um, invest in equities and, you know, compound interest, real estate investment, trust, gold. You know, I have like a portfolio that I manage. I've actually taught stock trading classes before, like any information I have for oh people. Oh my God, that's incredible. I yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I have like one stock portfolio that someone else made for me. I've barely <laughs> touched it. I'm yeah. so bad at investing already. <laughs> oh my God. Good for you, girl. Like, thanks, Was thanks. there any specific piece of advice that she told you that really sticks out that you do every single day like when it comes to financial the stuff. discipline and um, just keeping my mind sharp with what's going on around me, like learning the whole investment world gave me a big like a lot of insight on the economy and like how things work and how it affects me. Um, but she just told me to stay disciplined, like everything I want is on the other side of discipline. And that stuck out to me. So me personally, yes. like I will, you know, if I'm shopping for I could be shopping for a pair of Christian Louis Vuitton's food and real estate investment trust all in the same day. <laughs> so, you know, I want I want to own a lot. And I understand that's what the wealthy does. And yes. in order to acquire that. Um, you have to do that through ownership. And it's something that, you know, my family and my community could use too, because financial literacy is something that's lacking in the black community um, vastly, where, you know, no one in my household was talking about stocks and, you know, saving Mm -hmm. and 401ks. It's like, what is that? How does that work? Taxes. That wasn't common language in the household. But, you know, making six figures, it's like, you know, I want to have something to show for it eventually, not just, you know, ticket items or, you know, nice trips and things like that. It's very important that um, I define my financial legacy like, yeah. So yeah, and leave that behind. So I'm big on that. Right. Yeah. I mean, a majority of people in this country, in the world, are paycheck to paycheck. Exactly. You know? And it's no way to live life. Like, no. it's, it's just no way. Um, and it's not abnormal or crazy to say, listen, I'm. you're looking at a future millionaire. Like, it's no, right. it's nothing crazy about that. But I tell people all the time, like, when they tell me, like, all I do is work and sleep. And I'm like, that's not a life. Like, that's not I know I'm not put on this earth to work pay bills and die like fuck that right. shit like mm-hmm. it's an, it's abundance out here and so you know I'm big on my money making money I'm big on um, you know if my job tells me they don't need me anymore that I don't have to scramble and go on unemployment and mm-hmm. borrow and things like that I've been through before when it you know I fell on hard times so yeah. um, I'm very big on that like knowing how um, money works knowing how these banks work just all of those things and um my friends and I have these conversations often too, like when you're like, oh, my 401k. And I'm like, listen, if you could, if you knew how to handle your own money, you wouldn't rely on others to do it. Like, you know, just gain that knowledge mm-hmm. because that's what's going to put us in where we are not on social security because right. there won't be social security when we get ready to retire. I was thinking yeah. that too. I'm reading all into that too. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, um, it's, it's been a game changer and she gave me a strategy essentially to like, you know, pay myself first. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, pay like every, so my business money stone investment, it owns, whatever equity I want to invest in. So it could own tangible gold, it could own land through the market, it could own real estate through the market, different types of stocks, um, um, currencies, um, my life insurance policies. Like I have a trust under that LLC. And so how I look at my money, I look at it as a business. And in a business, you need to manage and plan for it. And so um, the three major wealth robbers are inflation taxes and fees and a lot of people plan to make more money but they don't plan for their tax liability mm. so all the money i want to make i want to be able to keep when we look at um the the giants of like just jeff bezos and elon musk it's, they are they're billionaires and people are like well why they don't pay taxes they mm-hmm. understand this game and yep. that's what i follow and i understand that it's a mindset first like mm-hmm. my bank account has to catch up to my mindset because in my mind i'm already a multi-millionaire i'm already yes. in those habits so <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that big account got to catch up to the multi-million. Yes. You know, um, and at least you're, you know, you're in tune with that. Because yeah. some people will start living that lifestyle and immediately go bankrupt. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Because it's one thing to get the money. It's an entirely different mindset to keep it. And I think that's yes. what set you aside from the rest. Um, I think, you know, especially as women, I think we're so um, agile in the way we think 
solve problems. So getting money for us, I don't really see that ever being ch- a challenge. Being yeah. a cancer researcher, I have an extremely competitive skill set. I've actually was interviewed with a Harvard Medical School student and they gave me the job instead because of my skill set. Wow. So I, you know, you're I, a boss. <laughs> <laughs> right. Period. <laughs> so, you know, um, is definitely where if I wanted to do that for the rest of my life, fine. But I just know being happy and doing what you love is very important. So that's, yeah. you know, when I started to get into investing, I love the technicality of it, like figuring out like, you know, what's the sentiment of the market and what's this. And that goes into my science brain and that methodological yes. thinking. And, you know, so that's it all kind of gels really well together. And um, once I started just, you know, going in and out and seeing that I was making thousands in the stock market, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, look, at my account and say hey I just earned like $150 when I just woke up like you know it might not be a lot of money to people but that's $150 less that I have to work for for someone else right oh 100%. yeah so yeah. <laughs> and if you know doing that every day um so you know I created that as an entity because that's how I look at my money as a as a business yeah so I manage it that way I invest it that way and things like that wow yeah. how did you get over that own personal hump of being like can I be a business owner can I actually do this because so many people have it in them and yeah. don't realize it, myself yeah. included. Yeah, and um, even when you tell me about um, your brand and your podcast, I'm like, I get really excited because I'm like, wow, like, you know, women, we can use this space to be ourselves and not be judged for lacking feminine energy. Um, yes. So, you know, you know I love your brand. I think your brand <laughs> is bomb. Like, even when we just meet for lunch, we're just talking about business and shit, right? Yeah. So I think it's bomb. I think... Um, I love you. What? <laughs> It's the truth. This is true. I think what challenged me was just, um, I always, I always had that confidence of like, whatever I want to do, I know I'm capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I never really had that like apprehension of that, but, um, just in my career, I've been challenged a lot to step up to the plate to lead. And that helped me, you know, in my business and even in my life, when I, when I realize how people gravitate towards me, when I realize the opinions of my friends and family and they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah." And that kind of has me like, "Mm, maybe, you know, I can do this, but I've always thought like, listen, I'm going to do this. And it's, always you know it's always a it's a huge um thing i think entrepreneurs need to have is a lot of confidence and trust the process like please trust the process yeah because yeah. everybody wants to be rich now yeah you know, ignore or... the noise because it's a lot of noise we have access to so many things and you see people like living this lifestyle you want you see people businesses are taking off but that's a mirage everyone's not going to show you the process and the downs the ups and downs of it i always say entrepreneurship if you don't want to quit like at least every day you're not doing it right <laughs> Because that's what you're going to go through um, constantly. And even when I created um, Our Health, it was the same thing. I just felt like it was the most impossible thing in the world. I still do kind of feel like, oh, my God, like it's so much to do. Um, And there's other there's other platforms that's very similar to mine's and um, just seeing what happens in healthcare and the medical disparities and uh, discrimination and things like that is I created the platform for that very specific reason. And I had yeah. the uh, uh, most obscene amount of confidence. I didn't see, I can't like, right. I didn't see that this wasn't going to happen. I just figured this is what I want to do. Mm. And this is what I'm going to do. And yep. girl, the roadblock <laughs> started hitting me and I was really? like, what the fuck? Like, you know, and you know, money is like oxygen to us entrepreneurs. So it, 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 it was mm-hmm. that, it was the guidance. It was the networking. It was which way do I go, but I got really comfortable and excited about the journey and not oh, the good. goal. So that yeah. was a big, that was a major part because even looking back on my personal life, um, the journey is what is the most profound thing um, yeah. that I can that I can say. Like I'm pretty much numb to when I tell people I'm a clinical scientist or they know I make over a hundred thousand a year. I'm pretty much numb to that because that's really the goal for a lot of people: six figures, master's, right. great career. And I'm pretty much numb to that. But when I look back on the journey, that's the part that always excites me mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, more See how than anything. Far you've come, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And you're not even close to where you're exactly. going, Exactly. I'm just yeah. like not even there yet. I don't feel like no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And how are you able to find like your niche? Because a lot of people realize like you got to have that. You know what yeah. I mean? And myself included as well. Because yeah. you, with our health, you you nailed it. You found something that needs to be done that no one else really you know explored yet. Yeah. You want to talk about that? Like how that came about? How our health came about? Um. So 
I know that um, being in healthcare, I genuinely love the field of life science and cancer research. And um, I would listen to my friends and family have these terrible stories about their experiences with doctors, um, you know, how they felt lack of communication, you know, lack of treatment, um, and essentially lack of respect in a health setting. And I never could quite understand that because I felt like I know I do what I love. I work with some great people. So how can this happen? And I just felt like it was my social responsibility to do something bigger than myself for people who look like me, because I pretty much got tired of um, being in a position to do something and not doing it. And I feel like that is true boss level, true Mm -hmm. entrepreneurship is where you are in servitude of others and you're serving um, someone other than yourself. Like your your calling is a lot higher than, than you. So that I just felt like, all right, I'm gonna start a consulting company that's what it was at first I'm gonna go in these doctor's offices I'm gonna talk to them about you know just diversity and inclusion and cultural competency and that was super ominous because even at work doctors are like mm, what do you want like you know and I'm just like listen I'm your fucking monitor yes, like you know yeah. um, so it was pretty ominous and then I was just like well you know my one friend she would always call me and say I can't find a doctor I can't find a doctor and I'm like well look on you know your insurance nobody wants to look through a list nobody and I was just like you know in my apartment one day and it just came to me and I was like I need to create a platform where I connect people who look like me to doctors who know how to treat them and that is how I came up with um, with uh, that entire platform of our health um, also giving us options and you know where I create not just another app that people can look for a doctor but um, where they can learn and feel comfortable and find empathetic care and find a sense of community um, you know, and that's when I started to to be come extremely passionate about it. The more I would talk to people about my idea, because yeah. I know our ideas as entrepreneurs are our babies. But mm-hmm. I know just going through the journey, never marry the idea, marry the solution, because the solution can come in so many different forms. So not sit there and get stuck in the idea of like I have an amazing idea, because it's mm-hmm. nothing if it's not executed, right? Like knowledge is powerful, but that's only if it's executed. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel about like this whole idea. And I would just talk to people who look like me, and they would say, Yeah, you know, I have this bad experience, and I just want to go into a physician's office where you know I'm comfortable with someone who understands my social economic background and I said you know that makes a really good great point and I would explore that point further and even in research I would see there weren't enough black people in clinical trials so I would raise the question in meetings you know how do we know if this is working for other genetic makeups oh my goodness and you know so those and that's how I kind and that's how I got into it and I just um been working on it ever since looking for beta users I want the honest feedback from our community I'm mentally preparing myself for whatever technical issues we're going to have whatever backlash I'm gonna face because you know Mm -hmm. that's the early phases of it right Um, Right. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking super forward to just seeing this launched and, you know, seeing the finished product. But, right. um, you know, just it, it was really what I saw in my career and really what I've heard from people um, in my community that just said, you know what? It's fine to have this great career that I love. I'm traveling all over the country. I'm making, you know, a great salary. I could do whatever I want when I want. But what does that mean if I'm not helping anybody? Mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean if I'm not solving a solution? So I feel like it really is my passion, purpose, and commitment to solve these issues within healthcare. Yes, girl. And and that's something that this country has really struggled with in general. And people can't even afford it to, you know. Yeah. And then you come along and are giving solutions that people yeah. may not realize. Like you mentioned to me when we were at lunch one time, like some people can't find a dermatologist because yeah. they're used to, you know, Caucasian skin, yeah. you know? Yep. yep. That's just, incra- that's crazy to me because you, I yeah. never realized exactly. that. You know? And you know, what's funny is, you know, I don't think that was something I've thought about. Right. Because we don't, necessarily think like oh get a dermatology checkup we go when something's wrong um you know specifically and that's due to lack of health literacy as well but then you know looking through medical just knowing what i know in the industry i'm like you know what there aren't any illustrations of black skin in these books or how to treat black skin like what a rash would look like on me you Mm -hmm. know so these things are consistently overlooked and it will deter anybody who looks like me from from seeking health care. And, you know, I studied sociology. So my dissertation was regarding my history. And a large part of it was just discussing these poor medical ethnics 
and practices that were passed down through generations of um, medicine. And, you know, I remember researching this one study that came out back in 2020 where they interviewed about 30 percent of medical school school students. And and they all said, yeah, we don't think black people feel the same amount of pain that others feel. So they under treat. So this is a major issue. Yeah. And so just looking at it, you know, you get taken back by that because you can't fucking believe it. You're like, no fucking way. But it's a really big issue in medicine. And that's why, you know, you know, we're under prescribed pain meds and, and these certain things happen because the ideologies is our pain and illnesses are our inevitable fate. But we are faulted by a system that was never designed to include us you know i have grandparents that you know were alive during the jim crow era and it was illegal for a white nurse to treat them it doesn't matter if you're in an emergency room dying like you know black people have died in emergency room based off that law so these indoctrines um ideologies are passed down through medicine and nobody checked it Mm-hmm. Like it just went under the radar. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm starting to see the change. I see a few businesses pop up. Um, there's a Nigerian medical school student, Chitterabi eBay. He started to illustrate black bodies in a book. So he's actually creating a medical textbook, um, you know, yeah. so, um, featuring black um bodies just to show medical students this is what it would look like if a black woman was pregnant if a black woman came into the dermatologist if you know if you see you know uh everything dentistry ophthalmology every sector so it's a major issue um and i love discussing it with people of other races that don't realize it because I think it's such a great conversation to have. Right. Um, you know, when, you know, cause everybody has friends and colleagues and, you know, people of other races, but it's great for us to understand each other culturally, um, oh, to yeah. know that we're not just neglecting our health. It is the ominous feeling of thinking that we're not going to be treated well in a health setting. And it, and it stems from so many major, um, historic points like the Tuskegee experiment you right. know I was it, reading yeah, yeah you said we will never have another one of these if yeah you, you know become, if it, exactly, exactly like we you know my community will never fall short of that and that was you know it was so many things in that instance it was the lack of health literacy the poverty it was so many things that they targeted in that um, experiment and this what is why was that experiment because I'm kind of like hmm what was that yeah so this experiment lasts for about 30 years I don't think people realize how oh long God. this experiment lasts so they were testing syphilis it's really similar to what we do in clinical research but there's it's heavily regulated at this time it wasn't so they appealed to a bunch of uh, poor black farmers and said listen we'll pay you x y and z or we'll pay your medical bills um, you know if we can test this experiment on you and you know the syphilis and so they injected them with the syphilis and they oh could have God. treated with a penicillin shot but never did and they just allowed them to deteriorate and die and so a lot of them went blind schizophrenic and then you know these men they go home to their wives right intimacy or whatever have kids and these are things they're spreading throughout their family because they didn't treat them with the penicillin shot and it went on for a long time and you know that just added to the distrust that the black community has with the government and any mm-hmm. government agency um and i'll tell you now that my industry um it is highly illegal to approach anybody to for any type of clinical trial without them signing an informed consent which is a 16 page document that outlines the risks the benefits the payments who's conducting this, who you need to contact, what is in this um, wow. experiment. And I have to actually look at that the moment I'm on a research site. Like, did this patient consent? If not, remove them immediately from this experiment. They have no knowledge of it. Shut this all down. Wow. So that's part of my job for sure. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And that document has to be reviewed a few times. It has to be rep- approved by the ethnic committee. So this one experiment has lingered throughout history um, for us. And that's probably why you see the surgeons of the black communities like I'm not getting COVID. I don't trust the government. And this is these traumas and these experiences that just passed down throughout yeah. generations for us, because it wasn't that long ago. It was like this. Around, I want to say um, Tuskegee was the 60s, 70s, about the 40s, uh, around the 60s or so. Okay. Um, and so it wasn't that long ago. It was my, right. I think my grandfather was maybe 20, 30 years old. Wow, so, you yeah. know, it's it's kind of like, you know, we still have elders in our family that, you know, could have been affected by this because it, it was a, you know, um, a STD that you could spread. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and that, that was part of that. Um, you have the gynecology um, aspect of it where, you know, they illegally experimented on women. 
Um, oh my goodness. And so, you know, these people are dubbed the five founding fathers of medicine. So if they're teaching their ideologies down the line, then we have this seamless way of thinking when they treat a black patient and it's a subconscious bias, right? Exactly. A lot of it is very subconscious, you know, um, and that's what I'm trying to fight against, the subconscious bias. And some of them don't, you know, realize, is it that all doctors are racist? No, but they do work in an inherently racist institution. And so mm-hmm. that influences mm-hmm. their decisions and when they're caring. So And generational as well. It's generational, yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what I want to, the problem I want to solve. I've actually had two great doctors um, in my personal care that was not black, but they were culturally competent enough to identify something within my um, yeah own personal health that saved my life so these are the things that i need my community to connect with because i feel like one of the disparities with COVID was because we are not going to the doctor enough and the reasons of thinking they're not going to tell me the right thing i'm not going you know i'm not going to be treated well i'm not going to be communicated with well Mm -hmm. you know i'll go in for pain and they'll think i want to solicit narcotics that's that's Mm. a common story in healthcare, you know and Uh they'll say no take this ad bill and you can literally be uh, you know have the most excruciating pain and this is why there's a low number of uh, black people that are addicted to pain meds because we're under prescribed it anyway we don't even have the opportunity to be addicted to it so it's wow. all of these underlying um you know uh, social comment commentive I did um, not know that yeah that's wow. just so like under the radar so i'm trying to bring as much awareness to this as yeah. possible so we could create this seamless industry um because health is wealth girl that's my yes. brand you know what i'm saying yeah we could talk about all this shit we want to do out here but if we ain't healthy enough to do it it ain't gonna happen especially mm-hmm. mental health you know yeah. so oh yeah yep and what kind of questions do you suggest that people do ask their doctor like to make sure they are competent to help them yeah. out yeah um, so, you know, just asking them um, questions. So just building that relationship with your doctor when they come in and, you know, they immediately, you know, they have about nine minutes to spend with you or so. That's just the structure. So just ask them things like, you know, doc, are you sure? You know, is there anything else you can look for? Um always be honest full disclosure they're not there to judge you they're right. there to treat you who gives a shit what the person that is caring for you thinks at the time mm-hmm. um so just giving full disclosure and, and and following up and being thorough hey what is this medicine what does it do what is it for what are the side effects of it you know like are there what are your what are my treatment options you know what are those what are other things that i can do um to help solve this issue or to help prevent it like provoke those type of that kind of conversation and I know it's ominous and it's intimidating because we're not often in circles where we're running across doctors and lawyers and stockbrokers and things like that you know things are changing drastically now due to the impact of technology and other things but um you know it it can be very intimidating right you're sitting in there and you're like oh god I don't really want to tell this doctor this is what I'm doing I don't know blah 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 it's you know I go in here I'm like listen doctors like are low key borderline my fucking therapist I'm like dude listen I woke <laughs> up this is what I did like from A to soup the nuts because I understand as a healthcare professional these things are needed to care for you properly oh yeah so always ask for treatment options if you're given if you're given any type of medication know what the side effects are know what you're supposed to um, take it for. Um, always schedule a follow up to make sure that whatever condition you have, you're healing from it properly or you have healed from it. Um, and, you know, have that conversation with, with the doctors, anything else I can do, you know, yeah. or, you know, is there anything holistic that I can do? Like, you know, what do you think? So just don't let them come in and look at their clipboard board and check stuff off and mm-hmm. push you out the door. Do not leave that office until you're comfortable. So yeah. whatever questions you have, ask is fine. That's what they're there for. That's what they decided right. to become a doctor for us. It's their Hippocratic oath to care right. um, for you. So, you know, if you're not comfortable, if you're confused, don't be ashamed of it. You didn't go to medical school, so I don't expect you to know some of these terms. Shit, I'm in cancer research. I'll be like, blah, blah, blah. like, you know, some of these words, some of these medical words. So, mm-hmm. you know, don't be afraid of that. And I feel like a lot of people in my community are, um, you know, even when they tell me these things, they come and they call me and they ask me a lot of questions. I'm like, dude, I'm not a doctor. Aww. And I'm like, well, you know, you have to ask these questions. Do not leave until you feel comfortable yeah. with knowing what your condition is. Like, yeah, stare them in the face and say, break this down to me in layman's terms if, mm-hmm. as if you have to re-explain this to somebody who just 
was born today. You know, just right. start to build that relationship because that is the person you have to trust to care for you. But be in the know, be in the driver's seat. Mm-hmm. Like, don't, don't, don't sit in the back seat. Be right, autopilot your own fucking health. Like, seriously, it's be true, like, yo, though. doc, like, you know, can I see my labs and let them go through those labs and show you what they mean and, you know, things like that. We deserve um, to know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's our body. It's our health. Um, and I remember getting a lab workup after I, um, I recovered from COVID and I was just sitting in there like, well, and I look at labs all the time and it's different when it's you, uh-huh. right? It's so fucking different. And I'm just <laughs> sitting there like, what is MCV? And he was just like, he explained it to me. It was the lab value. And I was like, oh shit, you're right. I know what that is. But you know, that's, that's my approach. Like, what is this? Why is this high? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, ask those questions. And that's what I like to encourage my community to do. Right. And luckily with your, um, with your app that you're coming out with, will already alleviate a lot of that confusion because a lot of these uh, doctors that are going to be on that app already have met this criteria exactly, exactly of yeah. being able to help yeah and knowing that you know that they're they're servicing a specific population um that has been disserviced by this industry for a very long time and just knowing that the genetic makeup is different and there are certain things to look for and i remember my doctor told me verbatim you know there was a lab value uh of my glucose and he said this is typically high in african-american people but i'm not going to overlook this because you're black i'm going to check into this more that's yeah. the type of care that we need because those things are vastly overlooked because the the predisposed notion is, okay, they probably live in a certain environment. They probably eat, uh, make a certain amount of money to where they eat a certain meal. And yeah, this is going to be, that's it. You know, it's in there. It's their inevitable fate. And we mm-hmm. also accept it as such too. Like, hey, my mom got, you know, diabetes or my mom has cancer. And it's like, what kind of questions are you asking? Because... Mm-hmm. You know, we say all the time in 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 um in in um urban curriculums, closed mouths don't get fed. So, what is it that you're asking so that you are very privy to your own condition? That's what I mean by being in the driver's seat. You got to be very knowledgeable and of your health because if you catch a lot of you know if you catch something that could mean life or death for you if you don't know what the fuck is going on with you prior to oh yeah you know oh absolutely um and also a major issue um the mortality rate of uh infants with uh um you know black uh infants my i have a friend that's a labor and delivery nurse and um you know the the rate of death with with black women and and, and babies are three times higher than any other race so this is another um you know big issue prenatal care is lacking for us so that's why there's an influx of black women seeking doulas and having babies um in their home so that's my app also plan on listing those options for my community as well um because i want to create that environment where they feel comfortable with options and if they do not have the trust in the providers it's our job to rebuild that trust that the tuskegee experiment destroyed wow yeah yeah and do you have certain uh types of care i mean you already mentioned dermatology and you know prenatal are there other like certain ones that you're going to focus on or literally everything it's really comprehensive so it's mental health Mm. mental health therapists which you know mental health is a big thing in our community um obgyns internists oncologists um dentists ophthalmologists um holistic practitioners registered dietitians right we you know like again going back to our diet and things that are heritage um food that's uh common in our culture causes these influx of high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, um, you yeah. know, so being linked with registered dietitians, um, you know, all types of practitioners. So I, I definitely want to start with primary care physicians. Everybody needs one. I know mm-hmm. most of us go to the doctor when only when shit's wrong, mm-hmm. but we need, you know, it's it, preventative care is something that will save your life. Oh yeah. Yeah. So your body's like a car. Don't wait till the check engine light comes on for a fucking oil change, get your oil change periodically to keep that. That car running smooth and I, and that's the best way you You're know incredible. I can describe it Your you know these are incredible it's <laughs> so, so true yeah so and my engine light is on right now bitch right <laughs> Girl, because let me tell you, I just got my OBGYN checkup. So I'm big on it. I did. I do my checkups all the time. And um, I was actually able, I was fortunate to find a black dermatologist too, because oh, I go for a skin screening as well. And she'll do, she'll like look at like very thoroughly at my skin. Um, it was able to find like a small mole. Um, that she biopsied and it was there for years and it was just like so many doctors was just like oh okay that's just they didn't recognize it you know Um, everything was fine but
but it was just it's just that extra thoroughness and knowing right you know so I plan on listing um you know those practitioners so I'll start with uh, doctors internists and colleges um um and some holistic practitioners as well nice um to give the community options because that's what they told me they said they need right. options right <laughs> so that's what no, I'm yeah do. yeah and it has really cool features like you know it has um where nearby parking um GPS embedded in so you click you know once you hit the link of the doctor's office it navigates you oh nice um it has a, a patent pending community boardroom where it's kind of like um you go in and you join a conversation on what people were saying instead of like a Facebook group where you have these conversations, you'll go on the app. Like, you know, I'm looking at this doctor. Let me see what they say about Dr. So-and-so. You mm. can personalize your patient profile. Reviews. Um, yeah, you could write your reviews. Okay. We're not going to forget your reviews. We're going to yes. solicit those from you. Like, how was your experience? Um, and any doctor that, you know, continues to fall short of anything less than four stars we'll consult with hey what's going on where you know you're yeah. on this app for a specific purpose they're not being satisfied where's the disconnect mm -hmm. um so they'll go through our diversity and inclusion um consultation if they fall short with that because you know i work in healthcare. i girl it's the gauntlet behind that fucking desk I like can imagine so you know i kind of you know i see it from both worlds and i think that's what gives me a competitive edge over mm -hmm. um other apps that are similar to mine and other platforms that are like mine it gives me like that competitive edge um we write blogs we write a lot of blogs to increase health literacy yeah. um you know I've, I've wrote one a very intricate one on how viruses work how vaccines are made like it's super sciencey but um you know i try to break it down as much yeah. as possible um so that you know just wh a while you wait type of feature so while you're in the office waiting you could just go on the app look at you know listen and if you don't have time to read you can listen Mm -hmm. um, there's audible blogs um, so things like that like just yeah. makes it very interactive um, and, and it just empowers my community to manage their care you know oh, yeah. um, and that's the biggest thing um, that I feel like is so important is our convenience because we're trying to do so much we're trying to recover from things that were destroyed throughout our, our, our yeah. lifetime and the shit gets busy you know what I'm saying oh, yeah. so it's so convenient when you could say you know I got you know you'll get your reminders for your appointments and things like that and then we're going to scale up to merchandise um, yes. you know we're going to have like some nice the merch. little orange yep, yeah yeah we're going to scale up to that um, you know, and just different things. And I, I just really plan on this being the preferred platform. So girl, I'm so ready. I'm so excited. For you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so ready. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I mean, I've been on like, you know, cedarsinai.com and yeah. like looking at, you know, different doctors and it'll tell you like what race and stuff they are. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Like, what will you say to people that are going to be like, oh my God, well, what about the white people? Blah, blah, blah. Because like, you know, yeah. I know what I would say but yeah. you know what I mean yeah like, no I get it and I've heard it before like so many times um from like colleagues it's like well and even my business men, um business manager uh mentor actually was like well you know if I was a white guy would I be able to find care too would I be able to and I said yeah you know you will be able to also find care but you also have to understand that this is a unique population. This is an underdeserved population that's being treated. You know, if you're considered the majority, the majority, so it's easier for you to access this care. Mm -hmm. We're trying. We're, my target is the disproportionate rate. Right. So this is extensive to LGBTQIA plus community as well. So my nice. business, my operation business manager. Um, she is well reputed. She works at NYU now, transgender woman. So we're working on those type of benefits and, oh, and doctors as well. So we're 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 targeting marginalized groups yes. <laughs> to get the care. But you know, all races are welcome for sure. Um, all races, all genders are welcome for sure, for absolute sure. You know, you you might be girl. You might, you know, let's say in the future you know you and your man don't get you might marry a fucking black man and have some black babies you might want to go to that so doctor true, you know like yes. so it's definitely Absolutely. it's definitely for it's yeah. really for everybody it's really to do to 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 um build this community right. of because that's just the reality we live in and girl we live yeah. in fucking california you see like mm -hmm. multi-racial shit everywhere we go everywhere so Absolutely. you know it's definitely for that and you know see the sign on is and that's another thing too the challenge of like these kaiser permanent these these city of hope these organizations that are like locked down mm -hmm. right and they're starting to realize the lack of diversity and inclusion as well so they have their own incentives that um you know i 
I'm, you know, I plan on meeting with and influencing and seeing how they're doing things. Um, but Good. yeah, diversity and inclusion means inclusion. And I always yeah. say, you know, diversity is going to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. See, the white people are at the party already. Now we're trying to ask the black people to dance. Yes, <laughs> you know, that's how I go. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah, wow. So. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. So oh. that's, yeah, that's the, that's the point of it's it. It's yeah. so important for people that look like me to realize yeah. like, how important this is for people like you, yeah, you yeah, know, and yeah. people don't. You and know? that's the conversation that, you know, I want to have. You don't know what you don't know. And if I was growing up in a white household, I probably wouldn't expect to learn about the woes of someone who doesn't look like me that's just not something that someone's going to teach because they don't experience it right Mm -hmm. and that's just the reality and I don't see I don't think that's the issue the issue is the blatant blindness to it and some people have this subconsciousness where they're like just like you like oh shit I didn't know that just mm-hmm. like certain things my Asian friends go through. It's like, I didn't know that yet yeah, because I'm not Asian. You know, mm-hmm. now and I want now it's time to have this conversation and right. solve this problem collectively together, you know, and that's and that's how I look at it. So that's why, you know, even though the major challenge is that there are only maybe six percent of black doctors nationally. So even statistically Get it won't be yeah, girl. And even in my industry, we make up six percent of cancer research professionals, girl. That's no joke. And it's oh a, my God. you're giving me chills. Yeah. That's just it's, it, yeah, it's absolutely no joke, like the lack of, um, you know, the representation. And so, yeah. you know, representation is, is, is wildly important because, again, you know, I think we're starting to realize, like, okay, this person is just as capable of this job or, you know, the buying this car, or buying this house. And it's yeah. becoming where people are realizing, like, shit, we were doing this for so many, so long, we didn't even realize this was an issue. Mm-hmm. So now it's time to have those kind of conversations and collectively solve it. So, you know, with that issue... Um, to make the community feel comfortable. I don't want to see, you know, um, you know, a white doctor. I don't think they're going to treat me properly. Just knowing that they will be vetted before being listed on this app. And black doctors will be as well because, you know, exactly. you got some of them that grew up in a different environment where they don't come into contact with their own, with their community as much, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody's going to be well vetted before being listed on this app. And if you're a white, Asian, or whoever, and that's your preference of what you want to see, by all means. Yeah, yeah. Join Dang. Look, mm-hmm. And so then how did you, how do you even design an app? I've never done that before. Girl, how did that whole process go? That, or is this, going? This ain't, this is no fucking joke. Like, um, <laughs> You have to have a designer or do you do it yourself? Yes. So I wrote out my business plan. It's over a hundred and some odd pages. But yes, with, bitch. <laughs> with the net business plan. Mine is like 10. <laughs> it's just mumble jumble. <laughs> Girl, moment. I was writing that shit like, what the hell? Every idea and thought I had. Good for you. So yes. I was writing it out. It started as a sketch, sketch of services. What does this look like? What is my unique value proposition? You know, what's the solution? What's the problem? And so within that part of the um, business plan, I have these specific features that I designed, that I know that I want to see, that I know my community wants to see. Um, and so I went to a app company that builds these types of apps. Now, a lot of people do this on their own. And me being like one of those semi-perfectionists, like one of those type of people that's like, I don't want to put bullshit out there, Mm -hmm. you know? And this is something that has to do with people's lives. Yes. So I have a third-party app company that is going to do the entire... We actually have a meeting tomorrow. Oh, nice. The kickoff meeting. Um, oh, fantastic. And yeah, and they're building it module by module. module, And they meet with me every week. And it's oh, like, yes. this is what I want. This is what I don't want. So right now, what I'm doing is getting people to go to my website. Um, sign up to beta testers so you could be an early adopter you could look around play with the features and you provide feedback to us on what worked what didn't work what you like what you don't like what you've nice. seen what you didn't want to see yeah so yeah I'm is it just it. ourhealth.com or it's www.ourhealth slash wix site dot com Perfect. don't judge me y'all entrepreneur here struck yes. by entrepreneur you'll get that, that out yeah of, I'm getting know. it all out the way um, I do have the domain name reserved ourhealthourway.com yes. so everything is super in early development phases but I've been yes. pushing the brand on Twitter on LinkedIn and on Facebook um, you know just doing all types of mm-hmm. things just pushing the brand and, yeah. and, and getting our name out there I mean you're posting I'm seeing it all oh, you know thanks, yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's you know that's people realize you, you gotta keep 
up with even that too yeah, and, and do yeah. trademark stuff yeah. this is where it gets pricey yeah girl but it's important you know it's very important and that, and that shit is no joke and I think you know entrepreneurs we kind of skip over that part we just want the end result mm-hmm. we want the money you know we want the fame we want the, the be on the Forbes list but you know those things are nice but what's important to me I feel like if I save lives if I improve someone's health or if they came to me and said, yo, I listened to your 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 Audible blog or I read it and it helped me, that to me is going to be the ultimate success. Yeah. It, it is yeah. not going to be successful for me to make money. I, I'm financially okay now. Like, you know, I'm not where I'm struggling in between paychecks. I don't borrow money. You know, I'm good right. now, you know. But um, that to me is going to be the ultimate level of, of um, you know, success. And then, you know, the, the different cars and the different bigger houses and those things, that's going to just be the icing oh, on the yeah. cake. For oh, yeah. It. yeah. yeah and you know, the fine husband <laughs> too, girl, because you know, I don't play, you know, I'm It's still- coming. <laughs> it's definitely coming. Yeah. But you're going to be the breadwinner, bitch. <laughs> yeah, right? You know, my um my niece mom made a joke the other day. She was like, bitch, you are the husband you want to marry. I was like, yes. that is so funny because women, we are like, you know, they let us, you know, they gave us the opportunity and we showing them we've always been worth it and we've always been, been capable of doing this. Oh, and yeah. one thing my grandfather used to always say if you want something done right you better get a fucking woman you better hire a woman and i say granddaddy Love that's him. smart you right yeah he's smart he's smart and he's it's smart maybe you were lucky and had you know like grandparents and parents that were yeah. able to do that but i know a lot of people have to get over that hump of what they were taught and you have to reverse that yeah like, you know girls aren't supposed to do this stuff or, yeah. you know so it's yeah. just it's important to really put yeah. yourself out there and yeah people don't and it because it, it's a very ominous thing um of wanting of feeling like you're being judged and that's why i I love the unwomanly brand so much because it just it's a space for women to you know be themselves right not be this same traditional way of what people describe as femininity it's not weakness being feminine is strong women can, are capable of pushing fucking humans out of their vagina if that's not strength i don't know right? what it is um so you true. know so it's you know and do that and run businesses and, and and excel at work and go to school these are all examples of strength so i think the definition of femininity is just so skewed in people's minds where it people all automatically think of it as servitude um weak the the weaker rate uh not race the weaker gender of individuals um you know the submissiveness the humbleness and i I don't think that defines being a woman i think what defines being a woman is waking up every day saying putting your feet down to the ground to where it shakes the devil and they know that you're walking in your purpose and in your path and your position and you're going to do whatever needs to be done to get to that point that's being a fucking woman that's being a boss right you're confident in yourself you walk into the room and your energy commands attention because you are just walking on the shoulders of your ancestors and everything they everything they sacrificed to get you to where you are you have that you know that you're falling in love with that journey you might be sitting at the table saying you know what Jen we can't get the champagne now but bitch uh, see me in a see me in a couple of months we're gonna be popping all these damn bottles yeah like you know that's 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 what it is for me um yeah. you know and it doesn't have to be where I need to be dainty I could say fucker shit right that's what I'm really right. thinking that's what I mean I'm a woman I know what I mean and I know what I say so you know it's 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 really that that balance and it's such a stigma women are always judging oh you're just being a man because I'm going out making my own fucking money who else is gonna do it for me mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like <laughs> yeah. um so you know that's that's what being a woman is but it takes a special kind of man to like really understand that and I think when you know it's such this war of feminine and masculine energy where um you know women are adopting more masculine energy because we're not we don't have the opportunity to to to, to be super dainty like I don't have time mm-hmm. for that shit right. like you know I have to run a target I have to be in this meeting I have to go here I have to do mm-hmm. this I have to catch this fight and mm-hmm. that's a woman that's fine if I gotta put a painting up or something if I gotta fix something around the yeah, house I, don't I gotta to, do it exactly you know? and I don't have to have all these aesthetics to be feminine I don't have to have all this going on to you know to wear lipstick to say that's what makes a woman it's like no it's the virtue like you're not paying attention to the virtue and the nature and the energy that's that's feminine and i I grew up around strong women dominant Mm -hmm. women and so that level of like confidence and i'm just like listen when we first had that conversation i'm like girl you better tell that man what you want don't be lying to these men in the bedroom um you know (laughs) right that, that comes from women know what they want 
Yeah. Women know what they want. We're, yeah. Yep. And that that's a woman. That's not, oh, do you just want me to, you know, right. men get super intimidated. It's like, no, I want sex and I want it to be casual. Oh, mm-hmm. you're because you're not, the ball isn't in your court, right? Do you understand that? That's, I'm a woman. I know what the fuck I want. Yeah. So that's, that's what I think. And there's you know? nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with that. With that. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, that's why I always tell you when we meet up and we have these conversations that I absolutely love your brand for that. I love yeah. you so much. <laughs> you are, you're, you're literally my number one hype girl. Like, you really are. And I really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, I love, I love everything. I'd be like, oh, this is good, girl. Yeah, let's get up there and talk shit. Like, girl <laughs> talk, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're awesome, baby. Um, when do you think that you will be done with this app so we can tell yeah. people that? Um, so I am looking to, it takes them about four months to develop. So Really? I, that's it? Yeah. I was thinking longer. Yeah, Damn. four to six, yeah, four to six months. So hopefully, um, you know, I want to create more of an unli- realistic goal. So I want to have this done by like the end of summer and then do okay. a major launch party. There's going to be like red carpet type Fuck situation. Yeah. We're going to have the Unwomanly podcast here recording <laughs> live. Um, you can interview different users and things like that. Yes. And you can just go around and report live. That'd be so bomb. Oh my God, girl. Um, so this is my vision, um, you know, to have all of this. And I just want to do something that is so much greater than myself. I feel like I'm in this position for a reason, girl. I feel like these people hired me over a Harvard Medical School student for a reason. 100%. I feel like when I walked in that room, I ran back out. I will never forget this. And I almost, I almost didn't follow through with this. When they hired me, I called my grandfather. I was trembling. I said, oh, my God, these people look so intimidated. Nobody looks like me. And my grandfather said, the reason why you need to be in that room is because nobody looks like you. Exactly. And, and it was game over from there. And everybody was standing up like, I'm a doctor and I've been in the industry. And, you know, we were all introducing ourselves at first meeting. I was like swallowed that yeah that pit and i was like my name is such such and this is the experience i have so i you know been with it ever since so yeah you are such a boss business <laughs> bitch. i'm serious you that's why i admire the fuck out of you oh thanks girl bro. <laughs> they always say if you are the smartest one in the room you're in you the don't need room. to be in that room yeah. at all you don't need to and that's honestly i I've, I've really learned that like i love to be around people that inspire me that literally have me on the balls of my feet and um that's how i got into the whole financial literacy literacy like I mean I was talking around I was sitting here and these bitches were talking about moving around 75k from one account to now I was like what the hell am I doing wrong you know and that just sparked that just hit a a spark in my head and you know coming out here to LA meeting phenomenal women such as yourself um shout out to my homegirl Bria who's the founder of the right kind of black girl just running into women like that um you know and that's also a space where you know black women could be quirky and nerdy and these type of ways that we're not usually seen and that's just a space and it's and it's actually um um diverse Because there were also non-black women that were joining. Like, yeah, we want to know more about the dynamic of black women. Like, the multifacetedness, what you've been through, what your history, what your experience. Because it's just not... It's just a conversation that anybody, you know, that we all can have. Collectively and productively. If Um, you're not learning, you're not growing. Exactly. Like, I want to be a student of the game for the rest of my life. Like, I feel like the moment I stop stop learning, I'm I'm done. So, Mm -hmm. you know, running into people like that out here was really, like, it was really the eye opener for me. Like it really was like, I can fucking do this. Like I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And I run into so many black people that's like, I cannot find a doctor. Like, I don't know where to look. You Mm -hmm. know, I can pay for it out of pocket if needed. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, this is, this is it. This is what I gotta do. This is my calling. Yeah. And how do you approach potential investors? Because I know that is a huge deal with business. Mm-hmm. That shit is no joke. Um, <laughs> it really is. For one, they want to see something super tangible in the MVP, which is minimal viable product. So they want to see this prototype. They want to see that I have users. They want to see that people are, you know, that it's in demand and that I'm actually able to weed out the competition. So my competition now, my biggest competition now is ZocDoc, which is an app that I've found doctors on. Hmm, um, okay. So, you know, you go on ZocDoc, you book an appointment, you know, very similar to my app. But, you know, sure, anybody can do that. But I'm creating a, a sense of community on my app. I'm like, I'm creating a platform where people can learn and, and be yes. comfortable and feel safe. And, and and really look for the care they want. Right. So that's why it's our health, our way. And it's not just the search process. There's right. More to it's it as more well. to it. Um, you know, you get your know before you go patient checklist, know what questions to ask, what rights you have as a patient. App is HIPAA compliant. You're knowledgeable about that. Um, okay. So yeah. So I have these competitors, Health and Her Hue, which is um, 
a black health app for black women because the mortality rate of infants um, that die, you know, black doctors 24 seven. So I have some of these competitors, yeah. but watch out. I'm coming oh, because absolutely. I got some things in store in the pipeline that I feel like I'm keeping my ear to the ground. And what's keeping me grounded and what's keeping me humble is my career because I love what I do and it's keeping my eyes and ears open in the industry 24 seven. It's giving me that humbleness of this is a reality. Cause as entrepreneurs, it's easy to get caught up when them dollars start rolling in, when that success starts rolling in, mm -hmm. the cameras are flashing. You're like, yeah, I made it. Um, you know, and if it's not where I'm successfully executing the goal of saving someone's life, then I don't feel like I'm successful at it. So yeah. um, that's what's keeping me in the know of things. Like, okay, this is an issue. This is something else I could have, you know, I could I could solve. This is another problem I could solve. This is something else I could do. Because yes. you girl, I'll be having so many ideas for businesses. I'll be like, ah, oh, after this, Absolutely. then this, this, this. So it's just always about being, um, doing something greater than myself. And it's so frustrating that they already want users. They already want, you know, to see yeah. that information. And it's like, dude, like, it's one of those like you have to have the degree in order to get the job. Right, exactly. It's, like, it's the same. It's the same yeah. scenario. Um, the investors definitely want to see the business plan, which isn't a problem. They want to see that I have a tech founder, which is which is hard. Oh. Um, um, a tech founder, someone that's technical on the team. Um, mm. They want to see this amount of use. They want to see that this is in demand over my competitors. Like, and it and it mm. comes down to monetary wise like how much are you making now um you mm -hmm. know how often people use it like are they finding success with using your app what makes you different than zoc doc and health and her hue and black doctors 24 7 and all these other things so, so it's been a challenge oh my goodness yeah. yeah and i bet you this happens to a lot of entrepreneurs yeah. and it discourages you entirely you're like man fuck this i don't want to do this anymore um but i just feel like no i, I it's this is it. This is my calling. So I keep pushing through yeah. every day. Um, I meet with different business mentors and they groom me for what investors are going to ask me. Oh, wow. And the thing that I like about my business mentors is that they are not black. They are white men and oh, they man. give and they used to be angel and angle investors. So they give me the game on like how to get someone interested who doesn't necessarily know about the issue. How would you convey this message to someone that potentially wants to invest into your company, but is not well versed on the issue because they're not black. Right. And that was a huge idea opener for me because I was just speaking to like how do you not know this it's yeah the reality of it is that isn't my reality I didn't grow up as a black person I don't know what it is like to yeah. be faulted by this system and so that helped me a lot so it's that pitch is telling that compelling story mm -hmm. um, that gets across to them um, you know having your numbers right because one thing about investors bottom line is the money if I give you 50000 I want 100000 back and I want to know how I'm going to get it. So and that's when. A, and when. <laughs> so that is something you have to be airtight with, like really sharp, really sharp with. Yeah, no, I can totally see that. Yeah, so that's been the biggest challenge is getting um, the investors and, and the money, um, you know, together. But like I said, I keep pushing. I, I'm, I'm pushing the website and people are signing up. Like, I'm really excited about that. I send out my blast emails. Hey, what's going on? We're yeah. doing a giveaway. You know, we're doing certain things, you know. So. And that you already highlighted a challenge right there that you're literally showing how many black people have to suck up to these white investors yeah it's like, it's, it's crazy it's, because oh. they don't understand the unique needs of our community right? right like we're a marginalized group so we have these unique needs and they don't get it it is so hard <laughs> to like explain and he, you know one guy he said the exact he was like well if i'm a white guy i can't go on your app and i'm like no that's not <laughs> That's not it. Like, you yep. know, you can go. But and, and honestly, even if you don't look for a doctor, even if you just want to go and look and see, you know, educate yourself a little better about what people around you go through. Like, that's even an option for you as well. Mm -hmm. But this. This is specifically designed for people who, you know, haven't been included in into, um, you know, mainstream healthcare. The same way Rihanna came out with Fenty and, and, and freaking had the entire makeup industry shook, and it made everybody look like, damn, we didn't include black women all these mm -hmm. years, you know. So it's it's kind of that provoking that thought process. But he had the same question, and it keep, it, and it, it keeps my mind sharp in yeah. knowing that I have to convey this message very well. Um, it's also a shame that it had to take this long for somebody yeah, to for someone to just yeah. say something's not right, right here. Yeah, and I think a lot of us, even Black people, I think we just 
we just don't realize like this is what we're you know we just don't look at it like it's an option it's a solution to this because it's been yeah. it's been haunting um for so long it's been this reality for us for so long and i think some of us accepted it and i think some of us you know we have like that ancestral spirit that's provoking us to say this isn't right let's do something the same way you know some of them slaves when they rebelled this isn't right we got to do something so some of us have that spirit in us um mm -hmm. you know where we're just like we have to solve an issue, you know, we mm -hmm. have to solve this, um, you know, and I admire entrepreneurs, any entrepreneur that, you know, says, I am solving a unique problem that's unique to either my race, gender, cultural background, whatever, I'm solving that issue. I respect that mm -hmm. because it is up to us to solve our own problems. Nobody's coming to rescue us. Nobody's coming to save us. Yeah. It is up to us. And that's what I do realize. Um, and it's, and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm not looking for a, someone, you know, to fly in with a cape unless it's Idris Alba, but I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only man I want flying through my window, girl. <laughs> but you know it's, it's, uh, it's up to us you know and and that's and that's what i think the beauty in our entrepreneurship is like the same way you're like i don't want to be judged for being less of a woman if i fucking talk about my period like listen i'm going to create this platform where we can do this yeah. and so like it's big respect much props for that and that's you know I want us to be able to solve our own problems yeah. and, and and listen, we could do it. Like that's, I'm going to have to fight through those investors that don't understand. I'm going to have to make them understand. I'm going to have to tell a better story and that's fine. And if they don't want to even deal with it, then they're not the right the, one for exactly. you Exactly. That's fine. And yeah. that's part of the journey. That's part of the experience that I can sit and, you know, talk to. And these are gems I can drop to my niece and nephew. If they want to start a business, I can tell them things I've been through. So that's why, you know, one thing about entrepreneurship do not fall in love with the idea fall in love with the goal and a, and in and, and, and a journey right. like just just please do it and if you're not doing anything that makes you happy and that you're not passionate about um don't do it because i feel like when you do something that you love um you're you don't have to work like it's something that naturally comes to you and everybody wants instant gratification mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't even know why mm -hmm. like yeah. a lot of people don't even know why like they just feel like these things bring them happiness and it comes from inside out so right. it's all what we're taught and what we see on tv yeah and everything like yeah that. yeah imagine if you thought of this idea before the internet before apps oh, were even a thing oh my god this would have been huge by now oh my it would have been so big i mean girl listen i could have done so much shit i could have sold i could have started the hairline i could have started so many different i mean i went to india i studied global business in india under my mba girl and oh ran goodness. into the man that sold hair to vendors here wow like i could have done a lot of things that's just something i'm not passionate about mm -hmm. and so you know i even if with me not being a millionaire i don't feel like i'm deprived of anything because i'm genuinely happy i'm healthy um yeah. i make the salary that i want you know i'm in i'm doing what i love i'm saving lives i'm you know working on this project I'm good. <laughs> you call it the Yelp of Physician Search. Yep, I call it the Yelp of Physician Search. I want it to be that preferred platform that if you're ever looking for a doctor, for preventative care, for checkups, if you want to go to a holistic practitioner because traditional medicine isn't your thing, that's where you go. The same way you go to Yelp for when you're looking at reviews for restaurants. You're right. looking at reviews for these doctors. You're, you're giving your comments. So that's what I want it to be. Our health, our way. Yes, girl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I I'm so excited for you. I'm thank so you, excited for this you. launch. Yeah. And it's going to it's it's going to go so many places. I'm so I excited. Cannot wait. Thank you so oh my much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, girl. <laughs> oh my god. Well, thank you so much to no the problem. boss business bitch, Chris. <laughs> for being here and coming onto the podcast. You are incredible. And obviously make sure to keep up with Chris's uh, company, Our Health and the app by following Our Health on Facebook and Twitter and get connected with a physician that will suit your needs in your community. So keep a lookout for that launch. Yep, I'm yep, so yep. excited. Thank you so much. Of I course, really appreciate babe. it. And yeah. uh, keep up with me and the Unwomanly Podcast yep. by following at Unwomanly Podcast on Instagram. And yes, we have merch. So go to the Instagram page at Jen Danzak. Yeah and we'll click on the link on the bio yep. you'll get some of that but yes thank you so much for listening no problem thank you go out thank there you. and start your own businesses bitches that's and, right uh, boss up girl tell us all about it in the dms yep that's right ain't nobody coming to save you girl get up put yep. 10 toes down on the ground and and show the world who you are the world is waiting for your value and your gift you're amazing yep. you're amazing <laughs> i'll see you next time here on unwomenly